Hey guys, Young Blood with you, and today we're going to talk through the backstory of one of the most potent and recognizable arms manufacturers in the universe, and that's Apocalypse Arms. Now, while most companies end up starting their history with an idea, this one actually ended up starting with a bit of luck. When Dalton Colabello, who was a construction guru, um, it sort of had a, this interest, like the storage shed buyers of today's reality TV pseudo fame. Uh, Colabello had an interest in antiques and rare finds, and specifically had a passion more designed and tailored towards historic weapons. So when he had the opportunity to end up bidding on a military surplus crate, he jumped at that opportunity. And inside of that crate, he found weapons unlike anything that he had seen before. And he took this opportunity to try and reconstruct and reverse engineer these weapons, but seeing as they were just prototypes, and he wasn't exactly an expert, he wasn't able to get them operational. Now, they did ha seem to have designs unlike anything that he'd ever seen before. And the potential power of these weapons got him really excited, so much so that he ended up trying to scour the universe for any details that he could to try and find the creator of these weapons to start asking questions and to try and get them working. The problem was, the only clue that he had been able to actually find was that it had been in storage since the Mesa regime fell in 2792. And while most people probably would have just dropped it at this point, Colabello couldn't resist and he just found himself pretty obsessed at this point. So he ended up hiring out private investigators to track down more leads. Finally, a historian at a university found out that an old Messer data log from Shipping Manifest had showed that the case was shipped from Magnus to Davian. Now, Colabello decided to pack up and hit the road, but upon arriving in Newcastle Magnus, instead of some high-tech weapons producer at the address, it was a cassava outlet, not exactly known for producing weapons. Not to be deterred, though, he ended up checking old records that ended up showing that uh, Ginley Engineering Solutions used to occupy that space, a name that was more likely to be associated with weapons, but there was no person named Ginley that he could find. Now, the obsession being unanswered led Colabello into a deep depression, and at this point, he almost ended up just selling off these crates of weapons that he had become so obsessed with. But he got another burst of dedication that took him over to the Ark, where he then poured over all of the census records and data to try and track down this Jinli person. Eventually, after years of searching census data, he found Jinli Moppin. But the problem was, Moppin turned out to be a six-year-old kid back in 2792, so probably not the mastermind behind developing uh, these weapons. Jen Lee's mom, though, was a former Aegis Dynamics engineer. So Colabella ended up finding and reaching out to the closest living relative of Juliet Moppin, who would end up being her great-granddaughter, who explained that her mom was semi-famous for creating scanners that were used to detect contraband being smuggled between human and Banu space. Uh, Juliet was also very much appreciated by the servicemen and women of the time based on her role in revamping the Retaliator to the high-performance model that we end up seeing in today's military. Now, being willing to help, she did provide Colabella her great-grandma's files, and inside he found his very first uh, break, a very nondescript folder that gave him his first breakthrough, and that was Juliet's original design documents of the prototype weapons that he ended up purchasing. Now, based on Juliet's work for Aegis, she was recruited for a classified project with the purpose of creating highly powerful and advanced weaponry for the Messer regime. Now, Messer was in the midst of a tough time in their administration, and many things were just going wrong or very dangerous in the universe. And the feeling was that bigger and more powerful weapons were obviously the answer to those problems. So to meet that need, the project was provided with a high-tech lab in Newcastle, and they provided her with a large and capable team capable of assisting her in the creation of these new weapons. Now, wanting to keep the project secret, they let Juliet name the facility and the Shadow Company, and to honor her son, she ended up naming it Genly Engineering Solutions. Now, the products that they were trying to develop were a mass driver and a ballistic Gatling gun, both of which ended up being picked up by the regime and were going to be sent over to Killian for their military test trials. Now, during the shipment to Killian, the military was mobilized to squash a rebellion, and they ended up offloading the crate uh, containing those prototypes to a warehouse where they would end up sitting for over 100 years. These weapons were the same prototypes that would end up in the crate that were ended up being purchased by Colabella. So Colabella had finally, after all these years of searching, learned the history and the story of the crate. And after feeling this level of vindication, he decided to purchase the original documents from Juliet's great-granddaughter, sold his business to liquidate his assets, and began a company designed finally to get these weapons operational and ready for mass production. And that turned out to be Apocalypse Arms. Now, the name ended up being something that was paying homage to a quote that he found from Moppin's paperwork surrounding uh, her purpose of the secret project, which was to build guns that could overcome any situation, even the apocalypse. 
Now, with the design documents in hand and the capital in place, he was able to finally get these weapons working, and they soon ended up hitting the market in 2913. Now, to ensure the weapons were modern and relevant as possible, he didn't just leave the weapons from their 28th century technology, so they ended up being upgraded to modern-day tech, while still honoring the power and potency of what had been sitting there for so much time. Not to mention the overbearing and borderline scary-looking stylings of those weapons. Now, most experienced or uh, most expected him to market these weapons uh, as you know new and his creation. Certainly, not to mention them being the brainchild of a, a scientist directly being associated by a, with a madman. But instead, he ended up taking that as an opportunity to talk about the insane capabilities coming from this time in history. Um, but it ended up making sure to mention that humans were lucky to not have seen these come out during that dangerous time. So while the marketing campaign was generally considered a success, many called it obscene, and today many end up feeling that the brand is tainted by the history of the company, specifically to where the, where the brainchild of these weapons really originated from. And because of this, the company has this really kind of weird, you know, du duality type of a re reputation, almost immediately being associated with questionable activities in space and being used to overpower those who may not actually need that level of force used against them. But regardless, the brand has certainly become popular and is a very, very loyal following. Now, the designs of the ancient technology have been so inspiring that the company continues to use these um, as their themes in their own design documents, and they keep those alive as they develop new weaponry to pay homage to where the history of this company has really come from. The result of all this has been a company that found a lot of success and notoriety for being one of the most interesting and deadly producers of weapons in the universe. So that's the backstory of Apocalypse Arms. If you have questions on any of this, get it in the comments. Otherwise, I appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned for a whole lot more content. Have a good day and take care.